Did you know old historic writings outside of the Bible documented the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Although Jesus' existence is a historical fact, the topic surrounding his resurrection is debated by skeptics to this day. However, in these old writings by historians who lived shortly after the time of Jesus, they all seem to document that not only did the population believe he was resurrected, but would dedicate a day out of the week to celebrate it too. But before we do a deep dive into these writings, let's get into the intro. What's going on guys? It's Big Nick back for another video. Thank you guys so much for coming back back to the channel today. Before we get into today's video, if you guys like Christian content, please give this video a like, subscribe to my channel down below if you are new, and turn on my post notifications so you never miss a new video. Without further ado, let's get into it. Alright, so let's get into the ancient writings. Who were they written by? What do they contain? And why do I have such a good haircut? Okay, actually forget the haircut part. Roman historian by the name of Suetonius, who was born in 70 AD, mentions the persecution of Christians in his biography of Roman Emperor Nero, where he mentions that Christians were being punished by believing in the resurrection of Christ. It states, Punishment was inflicted on the Christians, a class of men given to a new and mischievous superstition, the resurrection. During this era of Christianity, believing in Jesus was met with extreme persecution. Due to the Antichrist nature of Roman Emperor Nero, who saw Christians as a threat to his reign of power. Some Christians were even ordered by Nero to be fed to lions in a coliseum where everybody could watch their bodies being ripped to shreds. You have to ask yourself, if the resurrection that they witnessed wasn't true and Jesus wasn't God, why would they endure such a brutal punishment for this supposed falsified belief? The reality is they knew Jesus fulfilled all the Old Testament prophecies. They saw physical manifestations of his power while he was walking on the earth, including him rising from the dead and appearing to over 500 people. The Bible documents Jesus' appearance to the people after his resurrection in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 6. For I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Now let's examine an earlier historical writing by a man who was born almost a decade before Suetonius. Imperial magistrate of Roman Emperor Trojan, by the name of Pliny the Younger who was born in 61 AD, wrote a letter to the emperor where he documented that the early Christians would meet on Sunday to celebrate Jesus' resurrection and would chant verses in honor of Christ as if he was a god. The full letter reads this, I have never been present at an examination of Christians. Consequently, I do not know the nature of the extent of the punishments usually meted out to them, nor the grounds for starting an investigation and how far it should be pressed. They also declare that the sum total of their guilt or error amounted to no more than this. They had met regularly before dawn on a fixed day, Sunday in remembrance of Jesus' resurrection, to chant verses alternately amongst themselves in honor of Christ as if to a god. Josephus, a Jewish historian born in 37 AD, wrote a passage called the Testimonium Flavianum where he writes about the ministry of Jesus, the crucifixion, and the fact that Jesus appeared to them alive after the third day of his crucifixion. The letter reads this, Now there was about this time Jesus, a wise man, if it be lost to call him a man, for he was a doer of wonderful works, a teacher of such men as received the truth with pleasure. He drew over to him both many of the Jews and many of the Gentiles. He was the Christ. And then Pilate, at the suggestion of the principal men among us, had condemned him to the cross. Those that loved him at the first did not forsake him, for he appeared to them alive again the third day, as the divine prophets had foretold these and ten thousand other wonderful things concerning him. And the tribe of Christians, so named from him, are not extinct at this day. Historians who had no religious devotion to Christianity all seem to document not only the existence of Christ around that time period, but the fact that many people witnessed his resurrection and were willing to endure extreme punishment for the belief that Jesus rose from the dead. Jesus Christ did in fact rise from the dead and prove to the world that he was God that came down to humanity to offer the world forgiveness of sins and have an opportunity to spend eternity in heaven by believing in him. In fact, his resurrection distinguishes himself from every other founder of every other religion because all the authors of those beliefs are dead. It is only Jesus Christ who remains alive, the living king who created the world as well as the one who will judge the world on the very last day. This by default means that Jesus' words are true and he clearly stated that he's the only way to God in John 14 6. The truth is not found in which religion is correct, the truth is found in is Jesus who he said he is. And if he is, then that means that everything else is a lie. Because he clearly stated, hey guys, 
it's me, God. <laughs> I'm going to die and resurrect again. And no one else has ever done that in this world. So I'm going to place my faith in the man who did that because that's impossible to do unless you're God. <laughs> Belief in Jesus is what allows us to go to heaven because believing in him cancels the debt that we owed the Father due to our sin and transgression. And the penalty would be separation from God in the realm of hell for eternity. However, that was never God's plan and that was just a consequence of Adam and Eve rebelling against God in the garden. And God clearly warned them, hey, if you do this, you will surely die. And what he was talking about was the spiritual death because once they rebelled, now humans had an expiration date on their bodies. We were supposed to live with God in paradise forever, but uh, Adam and Eve did not want to do that and they made this earth ghetto because of that. God has given everyone a chance to come into eternal life through the knowledge of his son Jesus, including this video right here. Don't play games with your soul and really commit your life to Christ because guys, this life is very short. Living in sin and disobeying God in this life is absolutely meaningless because because in the scale of eternity, your life is only this much. Even though you may have 80 years, 90 years, if you make it that long, that versus eternity, which is immeasurable, and I can't even give you a graph that would describe it because it's forever. This small of a life that you have living in sin versus eternity, is not worth it at all. I'm gonna go to the kingdom I, and nobody's gonna stop me from going there. I don't need to live in sin. I don't need to do all this worldly stuff. Sin is whack anyways. I want the love of God. I wanna love God and serve God and I'm gonna continue to be able to do that when I die and pass away. Think about it guys. Make a long-term investment in your soul. Don't just discard your soul in the trash like it's worth nothing because you have angels and demons fighting over it every single day. If you saw how valuable your soul was in the spirit, you'd change your life. You'd think differently. If you believe in the resurrection of Jesus, I want you to comment down below, Christ is risen. If you guys want to financially sow into this ministry, I have an offering link that's in the description, or I have merch that I just dropped, which you can also get in the description, or you can look at it in the little shelf right here under my YouTube channel. You all know how to do that. I'll see you guys very soon for another video. I love you guys so much. May God bless all of you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Take care and peace out. There's only one worthy to sit on the throne. Can't wait till he called me to get out this world and I'll finally be in my own. You see I'm a menace to hell. I'm aware that my name is extremely well known. The Lord and his angels are always around me. I know that I'm never alone. Walking with God, yeah, my sin's been atoned. Better not play around with me. Could Jesus Christ call me and maybe his own? Had to repent on my knees for things in the past I no longer Condone. The spirit be giving me peace Always be walking around with Shalom The work of the cross was a mercy show So I'm gonna be walking on the narrow road